Hey there, friends from the future, whether that's the two second delay that we're on, or if you're watching this on video at some time in the, uh, at some time down the road, uh, I'd like to welcome you back to Metal Monday. We will be looking at high availability with BGP today. And um, I am Jeremy Tanner, uh, Penguin on the internet. And uh, word is we'll be talking about a different sort of bird today. I'd like to bring in the co-hosts, we have Tom Crow. Hey, gang. David McKay. Hey, how's it going? Dan Finnerin. Hello. There we go. All right. So we are going to try and tackle a common problem, I guess, that people have with scaling on bare metal. Anyone want to talk about that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure, I suppose. I mean, uh, I, one of the key uh, issues that people kind of hit, I guess, within bare metal environments is uh, lack of facilities um, and how best to kind of um, manage those and emulate things that would normally require physical devices. Uh, so I guess that's kind of some of the stuff that we're going to be covering today in terms of um, using uh, a few different techniques for providing high availability for services uh, on bare metal. Nice. So I believe our, our plan is we're going to spin up just, I guess, some random Nginx servers across a variety of bare metal machines. And then our first challenge is we, we, we want to be able to provide some load balancing across those Nginx servers. Uh, and then we want to be able to remove the single point of failure from the load balancing by using a BGP. Now, maybe we could, I'm just going to nominate you, Dan, since you are a resident <laughs> expert here. I am not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, like, so I think, I'm hoping, you know, the people viewing are, are going to have a good understanding of Nginx and load balancing. We're going to use HGA proxy for that. These are these are tools that most people probably familiar with. However, it's a concern that you may not have outside of bare metal environments would be BGP and and using that with elastic ips etc so can you just kind of give us the quick one or two minute overview of what that problem is and how we solve it yeah so um i mean the the core kind of concept really here is the uh the virtual ip or the elastic ip in this instance which um in cloud parlance you typically will go um i require uh, an eip or i require one of these virtual ip addresses uh, and you can add your services underneath it uh, and magic typically will happen whenever traffic goes to that ip address that you asked for you will be passed to one of the instances that sits underneath it um there is magic that is transpiring between your virtual machines and that elastic ip uh in uh, a bare metal or on premises um, uh, environment, that magic is typically uh, BGP. Um, and what BGP is doing is saying um, you enable BGP on all of those instances, and all of those instances are saying to the networking equipment, um, you can route to me to access uh, services that I'm actually running. So all of the machines that you would have in your, your pool uh, will all advertise that that uh, elastic IP. They will all say, I am advertising my services from the the, the address that was given. Um, and the routers themselves can actually take care then of sending traffic to one of the instances that are actually advertising that elastic IP. And just so we're um, all on the same page, Dan, do you mind telling people what BGP is? So BGP... <laughs> Just quickly going onto Wikipedia. No, BGP. Um, hands here. BGP is border. I've forgotten border gateway. Gateway protocol, um, <laughs> and it is used uh, throughout the internet for um, routes and machines advertising to the rest of the internet. That if you want to get to these particular IP addresses, then send your traffic through me or through this particular device. Um, and I, that, you know, these routes that we're advertising will get you to where you need to go. Um, I suppose it's also worth mentioning the BGP has also been notable for some of the larger internet outages uh, over the last few years, where there have been human errors or, um, in some cases, uh, 
bad actors that have uh, been on, on the internet and said to other devices on the internet, um, hey, you want to get to Google? Then send your traffic through me, um, at which point you'll find that Google has disappeared off the internet because the traffic is going somewhere that it isn't meant to do. Um, so yeah, BGP is powerful, but also in the wrong hands, dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I think since I, I started this position and I have I've become a lot more familiar with BGP, I'm starting to notice just how many of those BGP hijackings and denial of service attacks actually happen on the, the big old internet much more frequently than I expected. Yeah, it's one of the key issues really is that BGP has been implemented for quite some time, um, but uh, randomly, not a lot of people have decided to uh, protect uh, the devices or, or protect how they advertise BGP routes. So um, there's been a lot of work now to ensure that a random person can't just advertise routes that they're not meant to be doing. Um, but that has been the case for quite some time. All right, cool. So let's just get started then, right? We're going to walk through... So. Yeah, we're going to walk through using the UI and do as many of these components as we can interactively. But one of my homework for after today's episode is to produce this as a Hulumi uh, setup inside of our Git repository. So I will do that and share the link. But for now, um, just for brevity and the focus, we're going to do the UI, which is conveniently pretty good anyway. So let's go. Um, I guess we'll just go with Ubuntu. Everyone happy with that? Yes, Dave. All right. Yep. Thanks. Uh, and we'll do Nginx123. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's just try and set this up. So we'll just... Oh, I, you can't see that. So... <laughs> da, 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 da. There we go. There we go. So I'll just do this here because it should be pretty quick anyway. So we'll do an app update, install. Because Nginx is just one of those packages which is super simple. Non-interactive. Have I made any mistakes, anyone? Yes. A minus Y for yeah. not asking <laughs> questions. Yep. Uh, all right. Done. That's it. Now would have been a good time to describe what BGP is, actually, as we, <laughs> wait, <laughs> as we wait a few minutes for these machines to come up. Uh, I guess I could talk a little bit about what I found confusing with BGP and maybe that hopefully helps other people. Um, but when I started kind of reading up on it, and this was a matter of weeks ago, so you know my knowledge is very preliminary at this moment in time, is that I didn't actually understand that BGP had a use case internally and locally as well, rather than just global BGP. Like for, you know, advertising IP addresses within a single autonomous system, there's still a very valid use case for doing stuff like that. And that kind of caught me off guard. And I think it caused a lot of confusion when I was reading up and what it was. So really interesting protocol. It's, uh, I suppose it's kind of interesting that a lot of people are probably using it without really realizing. Um, so for instance, if you're using Calico uh, as your uh, CNI plugin for a Kubernetes cluster, what is typically happening there is the the pods that you are creating, um, they're given an internal IP address, and the BIRD BGP protocol um, is being used to advertise to all other nodes in the cluster that to get to this pod IP address, you should send your traffic through, uh, you should route your traffic through the host uh, where the pod actually is now running. So it's doing all of that. You just, it's all transparent to the end user. Ah. Nice to know. I'm just going to spin up our uh, HE proxy machine just now too. Oh, we want two HE proxies, don't we? Because we're going to do high availability with the HE proxy. And then we d just need one machine with, what's the program that we're going to be using today to do the BGP announcements? Uh, so the program that we'll be running on uh, the nodes that we want to advertise from is called Bird which is the BGP internet routing daemon <laughs> off the top of my head. I think I've got that right. Apologies if not. Um, quite simply, what that will do is we tell it, um, these are the networking devices. These are the IP addresses of the networking devices in our environment. This is the address that we would like to advertise that is coming from us ourselves as a server. And it will then start advertising that to the, to the network. 
Okay, so I've got my first question then. Do we install BERT on our HA proxy machines or does BERT run on its own machine away from the HA proxies that we want to provide high availability for? So uh, BERT is effectively just going to do uh, a a advertising IP address um, to the outside world. We would need HA proxy running on the same machines because we would need the TCP ports to be advertised from that address. So if we were, if we didn't do that, um, our elastic IP would go to a machine, but we would have no ports to connect to or anything like that. Okay, pop quiz then, Hotshot. What's the bird package called <laughs> on Ubuntu? <laughs> uh, <laughs> bird? I, I actually, I'm not entirely sure. I can. Giggle, giggle, help me. Yeah, Damn I think it. it's just called bird. Bird hyphen BGP. Bird hyphen BGP. Oh, well, there's actually a bird and a bird BGP. Are those... No, oh, this is a traditional oh. package. It's okay. So I think we can get away with just bird. And then I think bird BGP would have been the old name, and then this was uh, provided just to make it still work. We'll find out anyway. So Let's see what happens. Yep. So this is our second set of machines. We're going to install HA proxy. We're also going to install bird and it doesn't matter if this user data fails because we're just going to jump on each of the machines anyway and start doing things manually till we get it all working. So let's see if this worked. Make sure I didn't break the user data on machine one. I always do that anyway. Da, da, da. Okay. I'm going to assume that that worked on all the machines. We have our three Nginxes. We've got our two HA proxy machines spinning up. If I ask Dan what the next step is, I'm hoping he doesn't say go on an HA proxy machine. The next step is to go on a HA proxy <laughs> machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Or we, or we can take the time for, for a brief correction. Uh, the B in bird is, um, is not for BGP. <gasps> What's it for? Wow. It's like new. It's recursive. The what? B stands for bird. Bird internet. Well, oh, I didn't name it. That's that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> well, we invite a guest on and Jeremy slapping him down with corrections already. That's fine. <laughs> it's <laughs> that's it, it's well, just a ho it's sure the hall of mirrors all the way down. It's a recursive loop forever then. <laughs> oh, correct. So, to just to ask a few questions, then I mean, is Bird the only way to do this kind of setup? Is there other tooling? Is there newer tooling? Like, what is the status quo when it comes to BGP here? Um, from the experiences that I've had, it's if you are wanting to uh, do this via software running on a server itself, then Bird is um, the kind of de facto way of doing it. Other software solutions that do exist. So for instance, if you are wanting to use something like service type load balancer in a Kubernetes cluster, um, Metal LB is the de facto standard um, at the moment. But uh, that has a, a BGP server um, written in Go that runs. So when you, when you advertise uh, a service type address, it does exactly the same sort of thing. It will say, uh, this is my load balancer address, outside worlds. Um, I have I have it um, route through me to get to the pods that sit underneath me. And that's its own written in Go. But Bird is typically the one that you would see. I mean, one may have taken an opportunity to talk about their own project there too. I was going to say, <laughs> isn't, the, isn't there a challenger to the market on for uh, Metal LB right now? Uh, maybe at some point or another. Um, there is, there's actually been, there's, there's Pure LB, which is a, a fork of Metal LB that does the same sort of thing. Okay. Um, uh, CubeVip, which is one that I've been part of, which also implements its own native uh, BGP server in Go. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is. I, is I think there a Rust one. There has to be a Rust one. Come on. More than likely, there, there will be uh, a Rust one. Yeah, there'll be Rust LB or something. Yep. It must be. All right. Well, we do have our HE proxy machines. So let's jump on one of them. That was pretty fast to spin up five servers, y'all. Uh, uh, it... <laughs> <laughs> 
I moved my microphone and I reached my, <laughs> my fingerprint reader is a pain in the ass. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. Itchy proxy. All right, so that will work. So let's take a look at our Itchy proxy configuration. And what we actually want to do here is configure our backends to be the three engine axes uh, and serve that over probably just the same port. So let's see if I can remember how to write an nginx config slash pull one up on my other screen and hope that nobody notices I'm looking at it. Hey, Makai, what are you looking for, looking at on your other screen? <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, checking the time. I know it's early for you. I wanted to be considerate. <laughs> Oh, look, there's this magical thing I just copy and pasted. So <laughs> we can define our front so ends. <laughs> we can define our front ends like this. So let's grab our IP addresses. Uh, and I should actually just, let's just share this too, actually. Um, this is just coming from our guides and uh, Econix Metal Docs. So there's this great guide. Uh, I can't zoom in on the URL bar, can I? No. Um, metal.equinix.com slash developer slash doc slash guides slash load balancing dash AJ. Anyway, um, I'm stealing everything from there. Oh, okay, so IP addresses, Nginx1, so front end, port 80, grab this one. And number three, And let's see. So that's defined three front ends, which I'm not sure if it's completely correct because I'm skimming this very quickly. Nope, let's do it front end one and two. And they provide a back end pool of engine X, which do I need to configure anything for? Yep. Oh, I'm doing this all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Please stand by. Okay, we'll get there. Piece by piece, piece by piece. So. Uh, what we we don't want to bind the front end is what we're load balancing on. So uh, we we actually did want www. This is going to be our elastic IP which we've not allocated yet. Uh, and then this is our nginx pool where we do render robin TCP and we can actually use the internal IP addresses. Using the public ones was very naive of me. So don't laugh. Come on. <laughs> I am trying my best here. All right. So let's. Grab the internal IPs this time. Two. My wife always asks me why people watch it when I stream. And when I do moments like this, I wonder why too. Uh, <laughs> it's because it's, it brings us all closer together. We realize <laughs> we're not the only ones who do this sort of thing, you know? Uh, okay. So I, we're Nginx. We're not using Elastic IP actually. We're just going to hard code this HA proxy to be its own IP address and other HA proxy to be its own IP address. And I'm going to copy this. And then we'll do that on HA proxy two. But I should be able mm -hmm. to save that, do a restart HA proxy. Oh, bastard. <laughs> uh, what did I get wrong? Must just be. Oh, that looks good. Okay, let's. We can do our HA proxy check, also coming from the docs that I shared a moment ago. It tells you to do that first anyway. I'm just a cowboy. Um, so, front end tries to use incompatible TCP backend Nginx pool as its default backend C mode. Hmm. Uh, mode, do you need mode TCP for the front end? Uh, that is not listed on this example. 
Um, we do have some defaults. Ah, there we go. Okay. So the mode should be HTTP, not TCP. Uh, perfect. <laughs> All right. Now, in theory, I'm going to open a new... In fact, let's open a code window. I want to paste that before I lose it. <laughs> and then we want to SSH onto HA proxy 2 and then we can confirm the setup actually works. So, oh. <laughs> last time I'm doing that. Okay. So we can test HA proxy 1 first, right? Um, I should yep. be able to hit this on port 80. And we've got no that, backends. That's, that's kind of working, right? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll take that for now. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's work out our backend situation. What did I get wrong? So we should, let's cat that file actually. Ping 10, 12, 0, 1, 2, 9. Curl. So they might just not be healthy yet. So HA proxy will be testing them and waiting for them to pass a certain number of times before it delivers them as healthy traffic right that's how it works <laughs> yeah that's the check part of the yeah so let's see nothing configured so it's probably going to be up at 30 seconds if i remember correctly but that's me going back a while so let's get the other one up and running and we're just going to drop in like that i think it's a good thing i did that and that is going to be the exact same, except we're going to bind on its own IP address. Restart HA proxy. Oh. <laughs> uh, the mode. Mode, yeah. Thanks, Dan. I'm glad you're paying attention. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's run the config check. I'm not sure what it's going to moan about. Ah, okay. Just needed a second. Cool. So, let's see if we've got a healthy AG proxy one Ta-da! Nice. Okay. I can stop panicking now. So, we have... And artificially, where did Tom go? Oh, T Tom, I coming back. Me. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, so we have an artificially scaled Nginx configuration right now. We assume this is your application. You've got two HA proxies running, delivering traffic to that, and that's great. But right now, we have a situation, and uh, if we point our Elastic IP address to one of our HA proxies and it goes down, we have no high availability. So based on what Dan said, step one is going to be to install Bird, which we should have. And we have version more than 60. So what do we do next? So we need to ask Equinix Metal for an EIP. Actually, there's a number of steps that we need to do, sorry. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is to enable BGP on our two HA proxy nodes. So we'll need to edit both of those machines. And turn on, I think it's manage IPv4. And enable BGP. Uh, what's the default root thing in the uh, I don't think we need to worry about that. All right, I could Done. be wrong. Let's do uh, So what's actually happening here is the we're basically uh, enabling the um, there's there's internal things happening where we're basically telling the top of rack switches that these physical servers sit underneath um, that they will be allowed to advertise routes to those top of rack switches. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of questions, so will we tackle them just now? Uh, we can do. I'm feeling brave. All right. So we got, well, we got a hey first from Fusion One. Hello. You're watching on Twitch. Nice. 
Uh, Tom O'Connor asked, does anyone still use Quagga? What's Quagga? So somebody brought Quagga up earlier <laughs> um, in a different conversation that I was having today. Um, I don't spend all day talking about BGP, but it seems like a very strange day for BGP questions. I have not heard of Quagga before until earlier, and I didn't research it. But apparently, I think it's just another BGP server. So BGP is a, 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 a software suite of, of routing um, software. Um, looks like it runs in a bunch of different places. For whatever reason, though, um, most places at the moment seem to have, as, as I mentioned earlier, have, have kind of migrated towards Bird. I, I don't know why. Um, I think it just has slowly become uh, the more popular of the, of the routing software stacks that people people run these days. All right, nice. Uh, one Funkman asked, does HA proxy check also look for a specific status code? Um, so off the top of my head, I think HA proxy will expect a 200 or 2xx code and it will remove it from the pool if there's any 500s, 400s are obviously client side. So it does by default, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if anyone wants to correct me, feel free. But yes, it, it will remove them if they are unhealthy or unreachable too. Uh, oh, and a colleague, Ed, says, thanks for the live stream. Thank you for watching. All right. Hey, Ed. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ed. So um, <laughs> we have, in fact, will we request a new Elastic IP? Yes, Dave. Okay, thanks. Yes. So uh, let's just grab one. We don't need any more. Uh, BGP demo, that will help me remember to delete it later. Uh, and that should pretty much be instant. There we go. Exactly. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, so we've enabled BGP on both of our machines, which means that the uh, top of rack switch knows to expect us to announce some thingy majiggies. Yes. So we want to here now tell Bird that it can announce that IP. Is that right? So the first thing that we want to do is to add uh, that IP address, that EIP, um, to our loopback interface. That IP address needs to exist on something on the physical host itself. Otherwise, when traffic is sent there from the outside world, we'll just ignore it. So what we will need to do is typically we will create a sub interface on the loopback. All right, let's see if I remember this stuff. Networking. So network and then interfaces. Yep. And where is so, low? So we will need to create a new interface. I face low colon zero. Uh, I next static. Is this an address we're applying oh, to it? Yep. That's all I remember. And then <laughs> yeah, it's net masks. All the 25s, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, two yeah. five fives. Zero? No, no. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's yep. 32. Okay. Yep. That's it, right? That is it. Yep. So once we. Uh, this is where we laugh when I get kicked off the machine. We can do an if up, actually, which will only affect the uh, that interface. Why has that not worked? Uh, can you bring up uh, the interfaces file? Oh, well, this is Ubuntu 20, actually. So it should still work, I think. Uh, oh, it's added it. Did it? Oh, I did. That's strange. Yeah, it's because this is, I don't think the EvUp stuff particularly works with the modern, more Ubuntu. You're supposed to do IP, uh, is it dev or something, and then up. So, do, do, do. see if I can remember. Link, low, zero, up. Link. I think was, if you still need to edit the interfaces, folks, I think we missed a line off, um, which was the auto. Uh, yeah, need to add the auto line above the, above the, the low zero. All right. Yep. Is that why they have up then? I think so, yeah. 
And all my good chat there about it being deprecated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, Equinox Metal have also made our lives uh, a lot easier. Um, I think we will need to add some additional tooling for this to actually work. So we'll need uh, Python 3.6, uh, Git, and Python 3-pip adding to, um, to our systems. OK. Uh, we don't want Python 2. Why is that even still the default? Well, we do have Python 3. It just wasn't available under. Right. Okay. Uh, which means we probably have PEP 3. No. All right. So let's do apt install Python 3 PIP. And get is. Oh, okay. <laughs> get should be on. No, get won't be on the machine. We'll see. Uh, for. Uh... Uh, minimized or compressed uh, Ubuntu, the normal one that we that we get. That was the uh, that was last Metal Monday's issue. Was Git was not on. The, was Git uh, wasn't on there. Yep, not in the uh, not in the compressed version or the minimized version. All right, that's noted for future. Next time I'm fighting with that, need to install Git. So, are you going to tell me to get clone the network helpers? Yes. So, with all of those bits in place, we can grab the network helpers package, which will automate a lot of. Well, it'll automate the entire bird config, actually. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. Stay, stay me up. Okay. Da, da, da. So, what do we have here? We've got some Python scripts. We've got a README, a Docker file. So the first thing that we will need to do is install uh, a couple of things. So uh, a pip3 install of JMS path. Mm -hmm. Done. And then a pip3 install minus E uh, current directory. Oh, all right, OK. Uh, install dash dot. That will get all of the dependencies that we actually need. The The final step now is that we can use that Python script to actually configure um, the config for us. We can do it so it prints straight to standard out, um, so we can actually see what it's going to do. So if you do minus R and then bird, mm -hmm. this should generate our entire bird config for us. So if we look here, we can see um, a number of things. One, um, the router ID, that's our cells, that's this particular machine, is going to be uh, a BGP router. Um, the interface localhost is where the bird daemon will look for the EIP to tell the rest of uh, the other servers, uh, the other machines about. Uh, if we scroll a little bit further down, we will find uh, our neighbors. Our neighbors are uh, basically the top of rack switches. So when we enabled BGP, um, that set up that kind of configuration that allowed this particular machine to speak to those neighbors to tell them that they have an EIP that they're advertising. So the Python script has gotten all of that information for us. We can now tell these two neighbors that we have the EIP. Is that getting that from the metadata? I believe so because I don't think this is using the wow. Well, yes, it is. I guess it's peer there IPs. It peer IPs. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Nice. Oh, very nice. I didn't actually know that was uh, how it was doing it. I, I just took a guess because I, well, I learned, uh, learned something new every day. All right. So I guess we want to run that configure again, and we want to store that somewhere. We can key that straight into etcd bird bird dot com. Bird or board bird. Uh, just my typing. No, it's not yeah. you. <laughs> Done. No, nope. bird, bird, bird is the word, Mackay. <laughs> so now, if we do a system CTL restart bird, uh, and uh, there's a couple of commands we can do. If we do a bird C, and we do show, Protocols. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all uh, space all 
space neighbor underscore v4 underscore one Cat that rolls rolls British, off us uh us must be right yeah you uh, us yeah underscore v1 v4 underscore one so here we go we have got if you look i'm trying to highlight this with my mouse uh bgp state is established so we are speaking to uh other uh peer neighbors uh and we're advertising our routes to them very cool so um we are now letting other devices know that we have ip addresses um and that if they when they have traffic for them to send them to this machine. Now this can take a few minutes to fully propagate uh, for the first time. Okay. So do we need to do this again on the other machine? So yeah, we need to do all of that on the other machine. <laughs> <laughs> Godspeed. <laughs> uh, network helpers. Uh, oh. <laughs> Install get Python 3 pip. Oh, was there another one? I don't think so. Uh, we'll need to edit the localhost config as well. Um, you should be able to grab that config from the other one. The other one. Uh, I'm feeling brave. So interfaces. Wow. Auto low zero i face low zero i net static. Address. I'll need to copy that from somewhere. And then there was a net mask. Yep. And that's the same IP. Is that good? Yep, that looks good. Uh, if, if up, not... might work. <sighs> oh, maybe it just feels the first time. There we go. <laughs> okay. Let's ignore that. So. Uh, now that I've copied these, oh, there was a pep3 install GME's path. Don't know what that is, but we'll have it. And then, uh, yeah. oh, now I can do the git clone. And then there was a CD network helpers pep3 dash install dash e dot. Yep, to grab all of the dependencies. Python 3 config bird dash r. Oh, no, it's minus r bird. <laughs> oh, bastard. Right. So close, though. <laughs> uh, Etc. Bird, bird.conf. Uh, All right. Restart. So, does that mean that we have two copies of Bird advertising the same IP address? We do, yes. Is that good? Is that bad? Is that normal? It's uh, so I, I thought uh, obviously playing with Bird the first time uh, when I kind of first started here, um, I thought it sounded kind of quite a crazy thing to do uh, multiple hosts all advertising the same IP address um, on a network. Typically, if you if you were to try and do that uh, by giving multiple devices the same IP address, you end up in an IP address conflict. Um, but this is not kind of working in the same way. So for a start, the the EIP address is bound to localhost, so it's not proliferating itself on the network. Uh, what's actually happening here is that Bird is essentially uh, doing a TCP connection to those top of racks, which is those networking devices, and advertising routes to say, um, if traffic comes to this top of rack switch with the EIP, send it to uh, send it to me. Now, multiple hosts can say that, and the top of rack switch will then do load balancing for us. And right. HA for us. So, if, for instance, one of these machines goes down and stops having that communication to the top of rack switches, that route will be removed. At which point, EIP traffic will only go to the remaining nodes um, that are advertising that address. Okay, nice, nice. So we're getting load balancing on the EIP, which is also giving us high availability, and we've got our internexes who are completely oblivious to all of that, who are just responding to traffic. So, yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, we got another comment from Tom O'Connor who just. Okay, cool. Uh, HTTP proxy allows you to configure what status code to expect with HTTP check expect. So you, so you could say 200 is fine, 300 is fine, et cetera. Nice. 
Uh, if you know what the defaults are, feel free to drop that in the comments too so we can share it. How then do we confirm this is working? Should I be able to browse to my EIP now? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> oh, that's strange. No, is that just a time thing? Does that mean we're just a little quick? I shouldn't think so, no. So I broke it. Why oh, is that not working? <laughs> what was that bird C command again? Can I run that one on the other? Yeah. Um, but if one of them's advertising, then uh, the command is show space protocols space all uh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. IP four one. Yeah, with underscores. It's, so it's unders uh, neighbor underscore I, uh, V4. There's an underscore between neighbor and uh, ah. delete the extra. Okay. <laughs> underscore v4, underscore one. There we go. So close. Okay. So it's established. It's working. So what we can also do is if we go back to the um, Equinox Metal Portal, we should be able to see from the machines. Okay. It's down. Oh. Why are you down when you say you're up? Can I hit update? Yep. <laughs> learned roots. OK, so they, the roots have been learned. So we hit update, which is told the the router, the switch, the ASN, and whatever we call that, that mm -hmm. to recheck for those published yep. routes, which we now got. I still can't hit that, but I'll ignore that for now. If we uh, the HA proxy is, is all up and running as expected, though, if we well, we can confirm that's still working or just hitting yep. the IPs, which looks okay to me. Yep. Yep. So we should, oh, hang on a second. Your HA proxy is bound to the, it's bound to that IP address. Uh -huh. Bind it to 0, .0, 0, 0, 0, and it will bind to all and sundry. We knew that. We were just testing you, by the way. Uh -huh. Tom and I, Jeremy, talked about that up front. We were like, Dan passed. Pop quiz. He knows what he's talking up. about. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping this fixes everything. <laughs> uh okay good catch by the way i would have spent at least three weeks looking at that so uh delete to there 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 there, there. so many fingers across right now <laughs> all right so please work please work we'll give that a minute we'll, we'll just tackle <laughs> another comment before we, we test it uh, so Tom got back to us and says the default with option HTB check is anything 2xx or 3xx is fine. Uh, expect this handy if you actually want to do, if you want to handle, I guess, 5xx errors uh, back up to something else. Nice. Thank you, Tom, for that. Very useful. All right, Dan. Moment of truth. <gasps> I'm out. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. That is Ooh. very cool. Now, I want to confirm some uh, assumptions we made there about the load balancing on the bird side. So, is there anything like, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to my machine and Carl. Will it be anything in the headers that tells me which machine satisfied that? Uh, we don't know. Let's find out. Server engine X. Oh, there's two HTTPs there. I was hoping it would reveal. Oh, well, maybe the E tag will reveal. No, that's going to be on the document it delivers. Drats. Yeah, I was thinking of. I didn't mention, but for demo purposes, on each of those, the the uh, the default page for engine X just numbering just numbering them off. Uh, you know what? Yeah. What I wanted to see was like if we shut down one of the HA proxies, just just to, oh, see okay. that, to see it's still working, that it's going to the other one. But I guess we can just shut one down anyway, right? So, 
I mean, we should still at least see errors in. No, we wouldn't, would we? Well, we're taking down HA proxy. Well, yeah. So now BGP is advertising an address that's not going to be resolved. Yeah. So in theory, we may load balance now to a, a dead HA proxy instance because the server is still up. <laughs> ah. Okay. Is there a what would be the route then for me to make sure that Bird isn't advertising that address of HA? Oh, I guess the, if HA proxy wasn't wasn't resolving to that address, the machine would be offline. Really? So. I, I yeah. So, I mean, so logic logic doesn't exist in this case. You would need to implement something or other which basically uh, stops this machine routing traffic unless it actually has a service running. So if Nginx goes down, then in theory, Bird should stop. I, I'm happy with that assumption too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, at the moment, yeah, they're, they're two different services that aren't intertwined as such. So uh, all Bird cares about is basically saying to the outside world, I have this IP address. Um, we need to then combine logic, which says there's no point having this IP address if the service is down. Yeah, I mean, we could pro you could probably put that logic together in System D by having you know HA proxies a dependency on Bird, and then if one goes mm -hmm. down, it's going to you know restart them and, and stuff like that. So yeah, there are ways around that. I was just curious. No, sure, no yeah. point me throwing random stuff at us when we were about to finish. That would be mean. <laughs> All right. Well, what we'll do is we'll give if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'll tackle them. Um, we'll wait a minute. Uh, Tom's going to tell us a joke just now. <laughs> Hey, you better paying attention, Tom. I am telling a joke. <laughs> you ready? Oh, I'm you ready. have a joke? You have a joke? It's it's one I got from my daughter this morning. What did the cow say when it, or what did the cat say when it fell out of the, out of the tree? Meow. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> um, as uh, as we were wrapping, Mackay, I thought it may be good to go back to uh, document the documentation also. And if there was that architecture diagram, I love pictures that we could. Uh, that look at for just a moment, unless you wanted to draw one freehand, but <laughs> whiteboard it. All right. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So that's not <laughs> I was really excited, <laughs> but just the, uh, just for a quick visual representation of what was, uh, uh, of the digital sandcastle that was built. Is this what you want? Yeah. Do you want to walk and through so, it? And so we can break any one of those, uh, break any one of those pieces, and it will uh, so still end up with a web server. The difference between uh, what we're looking at here is that our uh, our our system that we built today is actually active active. So um, the EIP will send traffic to both load both balancers. Ah, okay. It doesn't. There's no kind of. Uh, no checking going on, regardless of the 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 state of the load balancer. The state of the machine is different from the state of the load balancer. So if the machine exists and the machine is up and running, then uh, the the path is active to that load balancer machine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that get that. Yeah, because we're we're taking advantage of the switch. I can't remember what you call it. Is it a switch or a router that does the BGP advertising? It's a router, right? Router. Yeah. yeah. So it's layer layer three. Yeah. So that router for us is is load balancing for us. But if we did want yeah. an active passive approach, we would just be running Bird on one machine or leveraging other tools that was a bit more sophisticated and could. Movement. Yeah, like, is that where Keep Alive D would would come in? Would that be able to do something like that? Yeah. Uh, another alternative is. Um, you can there there is capability inside the Equinix Metal API to say uh, without using BGP to speak to the Equinix Metal API to do uh, like a direct association of an EIP to a single machine. Oh. So not using BGP, that will basically program the top of rack switches with a static route, which says traffic for that EIP goes to this one machine, and that's that's through an API call. Ah, nice. Okay, I like that too. Something for us to play with another day for sure. Yep, it's a little bit slower. Uh, is is the main thing to and the main thing to be uh, aware of. All right, I, I don't think we're going to get any more questions. If they do come in, they come in after the buzzer, which means we will follow up in the comments section later. Uh, anything from anyone else before we we wrap up? 
I have a joke. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> what is a bird's favorite game? Beekaboo. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Makai, do you want to throw up your uh, your promo code so that people can try this stuff out for free on Equinix Metal? Boom. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Yeah. That is more than enough to test out and play with. Yeah, it was really great about that $50. It's like I've been trying to work out where the sweet spot is. And like you can get 100 hours on, on our small instances, which is ridiculous value. Um, but you can also spend that pretty quick. You can spend it in like less than 20 hours with the top of the lane machines. So, you know, pick your poison wisely, people. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Dan. Uh, it was great having you on Metal Mondays. We really enjoyed that. And your insights were fantastic, as always. So. Best dungeon master. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you... And next week, we won't have Metal Mondays, but Makai, you have something else exciting for next Monday, right? Uh, next Monday is the KubeCon wrap-up show? Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, this week is KubeCon North America Virtual. Uh, I think it is Tuesday through Friday. Mm -hmm. I will be sitting up stupidly late watching every single talk that I can so that we can talk about it next week. And I have a host of guests joining us as well from the awesome. Kubernetes community. So we will be taking a look at the news, the new features, and all the awesome talks that we've seen uh, and giving you the lowdown of what we liked. It'll be awesome. Very cool. You can also walk your virtual body by our digital booth. Yeah. I think every one of us will be there at some point throughout the week. So come say hi. All right. Sweet. Well, thank you all of you for your time. Have a great day. And I will speak to you all very, very soon. And goodbye. goodbye and a happy Monday.